What's up, everybody? Caron Jackpot coming at you. It is Tuesday evening. It's November 6, 2018, and it's time for college football week number 11. The picks against the spread. Let's see what we can do this week. We have 41 games on the bill to do this weekend. We are going to go through them. Uh, in pretty rapid speed here. We actually have 42 games to do. I uh, got a little bit of a late start on this this evening. So I had to scratch the uh, Kent State at Buffalo game, uh, which is already well underway, and the Bulls are leading 41 nothing in the third quarter. Just so you know, I would have taken them to cover the spread. Really high on Buffalo. Crazy. There's like seven people in the stands. Uh, I don't really understand the lack of fan support there. I mean, I'm sure it's cold and everything, but hey, your team's like 8-1. and one, Come to the game. Uh, but at any rate, let's get going on these guys. And tomorrow night, we have Toledo on the road at Northern Illinois, the Huskies, uh, laying three at home against Toledo. Other six and three on the year. Toledo comes in five and four. Northern Illinois has not lost a game since way back in uh, September when they lost to uh, Florida State uh, on the road. So I am going to, in this, take the uh, homestead and Huskies to win and cover the spread at home against Toledo. Toledo put some points up on the board, but uh, look for Northern Illinois to put a good defensive performance together and win that game at home. Uh, Wake Forest on the road at NC State. This is Thursday night. Uh, the pack is uh, laying 17 at home against Wake Forest. Uh, to me, this seems like a lot of points, uh, maybe, but is it? I don't know. Um, Wake Forest really disappointing this year. Um, I thought they were going to do a lot better than what they are with them. We knew that they... Uh, had a good offense, and they should be shown flashes of that good offense this year, but their defense has been really bad. Uh, they've given up a ton of points to uh, uh, several different teams. Clemson, uh, you know, really bad, bad loss there uh, is one that comes to mind. Uh, you know, they did have a good win on the road at Louisville a couple weeks ago. Uh, gave up a ton of points last week to Syracuse at home in a loss. Um, yeah, this is... And this is kind of a tough one. This is kind of a little bit of a rivalry spot. Uh, 17 points is a lot. I don't think NC State is that good. Uh, however, they did uh, put a shellacking on Florida State last week. Um, so I'm going to go on ahead and take the pack here to cover the spread in this one. Probably about a three-touchdown win. Not much. Probably not much over 17, but they are going to cover the spread there, I do believe. Uh, this one's a uh, Friday night game. We have Loserville. Uh, on the road in Syracuse, they're at the Fruit. The Fruit is laying 21 at home in the Carrier Dome. Louisville comes in 2-7. and seven. Syracuse is 7-2. and two. Um, you know, To put how bad Louisville is this year in perspective, last year Louisville won the game against Syracuse 56-10. This year, they're 21-point underdogs. I mean, I've watched Louisville play. They have probably one of – now, I've been watching football for a long, long time, right around 40 years. Uh, they have one of the worst defenses I have ever seen in all my years of watching football. Uh, 21 points is not enough here. Uh, give me the fruit to cover. Uh, they play well in the Carrier Dome anyway, and uh, Louisville is just – they're a lost cause. Fresno on the road at Boise State. This is a 10-15 uh, matchup on Friday night. Uh, Fresno, 8-1 and one on the year. Boise State uh, kind of falling off the map. They're not right or anything like that. They're still 7-2. and two. They've only lost to Oklahoma State and uh, San Diego State. Um, yeah, they're three-point favorites in uh, Boise on the blue turf. Fresno State. Fresno State is a really good defensive team. Uh, so I'm going to take them here to cover the spread and keep on rolling. Uh, I think they hand the Broncos their third loss of the year and uh, continue a push on up into the uh, top 20, perhaps. Uh, Vanderbilt on the road at Missouri. Missouri is a 17-point favorite. 
Uh, we're laying 17 at home against Vanderbilt. Uh, this one I don't understand. This is kind of fake of overreaction to them uh, winning by three touchdowns against Florida last week. Yeah, that was an impressive win, but, you know, I take nothing away from Vanderbilt has played uh, everybody really tough this year. Um, a few weeks ago, they went on the road to Kentucky. You know, that was a slugfest. You know, a game tied for much of the game. Ended up losing 14-7. Um, you know, went on the road. You got a win a couple weeks ago against Arkansas. Uh, Vanderbilt is not a bad football team. They don't have a lot of depth. Uh, they don't have the talent that some people do. Uh, it's a skill position especially, but uh, this is a tough bunch. And 17 points is way too much there. I do think Missouri wins that game, uh, but that's uh, 10 points or less in my opinion. Vanderbilt will give them a game. The Gamecocks on the road at the Gators. Gators uh, laying six and a half in the swamp against my Gamecocks. Of course, Florida come off a bad loss last week, 38-17 at uh, home against Missouri, uh, kind of an upset deal there. And uh, Gamecocks, 48-44, comeback win at Ole Miss. So we kind of kind of played into their type of game this past weekend. And, um, you know, it, we've lost a lot of players off that defense. It's really banged up. Um, this is uh, the kind of game – that I could see us getting outmatched uh, along the lines of scrimmage. I think Florida still, despite their problems moving the ball, despite the quarterback issues, they're still good along the lines of scrimmage. Uh, they have some uh, really good defensive ends. A good linebacker, David Reese. Uh, the Voshan Joseph uh, is the rush uh, outside end. Still a good football player. Um Six and a half points, I think, is a little bit much. Now, this is the kind of game that I could see us not being ready to play, letting the injuries get the best of us, and losing by two scores. Would not surprise me. It also would not surprise me to see us come out, play really well, and win this game. Um, therefore, I'm going to take my Gamecocks to cover the spread here. Uh, in the end, I just have a gut feeling that Florida's going to win. They're going to find a way to pull it out just because of the fact that this is not a spot that we normally play well in. Uh, I think Carolina's won here like two times uh, in, what, almost 30 years of being in the Southeastern Conference. But um, I'm going to take us to cover the spread against Florida. In this one, uh, hopefully they're not rebounding uh, and come back with a good performance here. They're still ranked number 15 in the country I, for the life of me. I can't – I don't understand that. But maybe they just don't have enough teams to rank up there or something right now. Uh, they're definitely not uh, not that caliber. I, I don't even know that they're even top 25 caliber, to be honest with you. But there they are. Uh, Auburn on the road at Georgia. This is a big matchup. Bulldogs laying 14 at home against Auburn. You know, Auburn's still uh, – a talented enough team if they put it together um, they could give Georgia some problems uh, they've won their last two games they beat Texas A&M last weekend which I didn't expect uh, they've uh, they won at Ole Miss a couple weeks ago um, pretty easily uh, Georgia of course a big win over Kentucky this past weekend uh, win the SEC East, you know, are they going to be, you know, a little bit lackadaisical this week? I don't know. Uh, this is going to be uh, it's an interesting game. It's kind of a revenge spot for Auburn if you want to look at it that way. I mean, they absolutely got humiliated by Georgia in the uh, SEC championship game last year. Uh, tough spot. Go on ahead and give me the barn to cover right here. I think they're going to keep this thing closer than what's advertised. The only thing that scares me, this is a night game for Georgia. Home teams typically tend to play a little bit better at night when they've had all day to get kind of hyped up for the game, get their crowd into it. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to take the gut feeling here. Give me the barn and uh, to cover in this one. 
Clemson on the road at Boston College. Uh, Tigers right number two. Uh, they've just absolutely been destroying teams this past weekend. Uh, no difference there. Destroyed Louisville 77-16. Uh, they are playing Boston College in Chestnut Hill. The Tigers uh, are laying 20 on the highway. That is a lot of points to uh, be laying against a ranked team uh, in their stadium. You know, is this game going to be the one, the, the one, you know, I, I got to say, this week, every year, it seems like we have teams that just, you know, they don't uh, – don't perform up to expectations. We see some upsets in close games here. I'm not saying this is going to be an upset. You know, I fully expect the Tigers to win this game. I think it, this could be a bit of a problem for them, uh, especially if, they, if A.J. Dillon can run the ball effectively against Clemson, which is going to be hard against that front four. But, I mean, you know, are, are these guys ready to play football? I mean, it's been weeks since they've really had to. I mean, they've been blowing out inferior teams. Now you're playing a team that's – yet they're yet they're still inferior to you, but they got a little bit of talent, um, and it's on their home field. You know, it's, in, it's in an environment, you know, that you're not that used to. You know, it's going to be cold. Um, the crowd's going to be against you. It's a prime time spot. This is a hard one. This really is a hard one. And I don't want to do it. I, I'm just, I, I'm going to go on ahead and take the Tigers to cover. I think they'll probably win by three touchdowns, maybe four. Um, it's just, I, I, I can't stand their success. I just, I. The words cannot explain how much I hate this team. But, I mean, I got to go with them on that one. Boston College is, is kind of like the Kentucky of the, of the ACC. You know, they got one horse, and, and that's it. They're, they're, they're kind of like Kentucky, except they don't, they don't have the, the, the hillbilly linebacker with the, the greasy face paint who can't decide if he wants to be on the football field or the deer stand. SMU on the road at UConn. SMU is laying 19 and a half on the highway in, uh, what's that, Stores, Connecticut. Um, 19 and a half is a lot of points. Uh, UConn, really bad team. One and eight so far this year. I think their uh, win is against, uh, uh, who did they beat, Rhode Island or somebody like that. Um, they've been... A little bit improved. They they had a close game against South Florida uh, earlier. They played close with UMass. Uh, Nineteen and a half points. Still a lot. They've they've gotten blown out a few times too. Uh, it's late in the year or two for them. So you know they're probably about ready to pack it up. Let's just go on ahead and take SMU to cover here. I think the ponies get it done on the road. Maryland on the road at Indiana. Hoosiers are two-and-a-half-point favorites here. Indiana's not a bad football team. Uh, Maryland last week picked them to cover against Michigan State. Uh, didn't happen. They dropped that one. Maryland looked uh, you know, pretty tough. And, you know, despite what's happened there, I still think they've had a good season. But, uh, you know, things are starting to kind of unravel a bit. Um, go on ahead. Give me Indiana here cover the spread, win this game in Bloomington. Ohio State on the road at Michigan State. They are three-and-a-half point favorites uh, in East Lansing, Michigan. Now, what Ohio State, what are we going to get from them? Uh, last week, you know, didn't look good against uh, a uh, Nebraska team that only won two games coming in. That was at home. Uh, but they are still 8-1, and one, ranked number 10. You know, perhaps feeling slighted a little bit. Uh, they got to start playing better, and they got blown out by Purdue a few weeks ago. And you know, with a close uh, a win against Nebraska, it was a little the, the score makes it look a little bit closer than what it really was. But still, thirty six thirty one nonetheless. Uh, Michigan State is uh, kind of an up and down team. You know, they had that win at Penn State. Um, and then they play Michigan at home. They absolutely get blown out. Um, they, you know, got a win against Purdue 
at home, uh, which was rather impressive. Purdue's been playing some good football. Um, still, I think this is not enough points. I still think Ohio State has a little bit of gas left in the tank. I'm going to pick them here to cover on this one. I think they're going to play pretty well and cover that spread. Navy on the road at UCF, 25-and-a-half point favorites. Uh, Navy has lost a lot of ball games this year. It's probably lost more ball games this year than they have in probably the last three years combined. Well, maybe that might be a stretch, but they 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 have been really performing bad this year. Um, UCF twenty five and a half point favorites. I've picked them to cover just about every time that they played this year, and I've been right. Uh, Navy you know, played Houston kind of tough a few weeks ago. Um, you know, even the Notre Dame game, they uh, were able to cover the spread in that one. Um, then last week they played Cincinnati, just absolutely got destroyed, uh, forty-two nothing. <sighs> UCF last week Temple uh, they let that you know gave up like four five hundred yards of offense to Temple. I mean it's the, the offense is just not uh, or the defense, excuse me, is just not there for UCF this year. 25 and a half is a lot of points. Navy has the ability to slow a game down. Um, I still got to go with the Golden Knights, so picking them to cover there. 25 and a half points. Uh, Navy just having a really tough year. Kansas on the road at Kansas State. This is a. Uh, a battle of, uh, boy, you used to be, you know, you just automatically expect Kansas State to just blow them right out of the water. Uh, so not, not so much anymore. Both these teams are three and six. Uh, could this be the end of Bill Snyder at Kansas State? You know, who knows? Uh, they've, they've had some, suffered some bad losses. Uh, lost by point at TCU last week, and they were blown out by Oklahoma a couple weeks ago. Still, I think Kansas State is still probably the more talented team. Kansas actually fired their coach last week also, but he's going to coach out the rest of the season. So you're in kind of a lame duck position there. Um, 12 points. It's a, eh. Kansas State normally plays a little bit better at home than they do on the road, so... Let me go on ahead and take them there to cover that. And I don't think this is going to be a pretty game by any means. Uh, Illinois on the road. Uh, Nebraska laying 17 at home. How long has it been since Nebraska has been favored by 17 against anybody? Well, that may have been a few weeks ago against Bethune-Cookman. Um, Illinois, uh, not a good team at all. Uh four and five this year. Nebraska actually has a worse record at two and seven than Illinois, but I mean showing a lot more a lot more promise uh of late. Um the Illini did have a pretty decent win last week though. 55 31 at home against Minnesota. Uh, they also own a win against Rutgers in the conference. Of course, they've lost the rest of their conference games in kind of blowout fashion. Um, Nebraska, I don't know. I still don't think they're there yet. Uh, they played pretty well against Ohio State last week. And, uh, of course, they got the uh, – they were they beat Minnesota, too. Uh, that's the one Big Ten game that they have won. Uh, uh let me go with the line eye here to cover the spread there and that one. I think they'll keep that thing decently close. TCU on the road at West Virginia, 12 and a half points. Uh, as our underdogs here, uh, no brainer. That would be that is my lock stock and two smoking barrels pick of the week. West Virginia, take the Mountaineers, cover that 12 and a half against a terrible TCU team at home. Ole Miss on the road at Texas A&M, 11 and a half point underdogs. Um, Texas A&M is a good team. 
They've lost a couple of uh, games uh, recently that I thought that uh, coming off of uh, their performance against my Gamecocks, I thought they were uh, a little bit better than what they were, I guess, but they've dropped a uh, game at Auburn last week. They also dropped a uh, decision against Mississippi State a few weeks ago on the road. Now they have Ole Miss at home. They're 11 and a half point favorites uh, in this spot here. You know, Ole Miss, we know what that's all about. They're going to give up uh, a ton of points to you, you know, or, or at least give you the opportunity to score a lot of points. Uh, their run defense is absolutely horrid. Uh, Travion Williams is an excellent running back for Texas A&M. Um, look for him to exploit that uh, and have a big day uh, at Kyle Field. Let's go on ahead. I'll take Texas A&M to cover here against Ole Miss as the wheels slowly fall off the Rebel train. Wisconsin on the road at Penn State. Penn State laying eight at home against Wisconsin, uh, ranked number 23 uh, coming in. Now still with a decent uh, uh, defense um, and really has had a disappointing season so far. Both teams, actually, this is the disappointment bowl. You know, Penn State's... Uh, I think ranked number 20 right now. Um, Buffett's still a little bit of firepower. 22 of them here. Uh, eight points, I think, is a bit much. Um, you know, Penn State just absolutely just got waxed last week by uh, Michigan, 42-7. Um, Wisconsin's not, is, is Wisconsin even ranked right now? I don't think they are. You know, they barely covered the spread against Rutgers last week. It's 31-17. You know, just looking at it, yeah, well, Penn State's down a little bit. But, you know, some of their wins just look a little bit more impressive than what Wisconsin's done to me. The defensively, Wisconsin seems to be the better of the two teams. Uh, it is in Happy Valley, though. Hmm. Go on ahead and give me Penn State to cover here. I might win by about 10 points. Uh, UNC on the road at Duke. Duke is a 10 and a half point favorite uh, in Keenan Stadium. Or no, excuse me, Wallace Wade Stadium. This is their home game for Duke. Uh, 10 and a half points. Yeah. Go on ahead and take the Blue Devils to cover there. UNC, not a very good team. Um, they actually you know, played a little bit better than I thought they would this past weekend against Georgia Tech. They lost that game by 10 points. I figured it uh, to be worse than that. They are 1-7. They are 1-7 so far. I did not realize their record was that bad. Yep, Duke cover all day long. I went against them last weekend, and they uh, got that uh, pretty big win at Miami. I think they continue – to roll on. Troy uh, on the road at Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern is a one-point favorite. Kind of a surprising loss uh, to me last week uh, against, uh, was it Louisiana Monroe? Uh, ULM lost 44-25 uh, on the road. You know, they got some impressive wins this year, especially that win against App State, 34-14. Here they are one-point favorites against Troy uh, in Statesboro. Troy's a one-loss team, or a two-loss team as well. Um, uh, hmm. uh, I'm going to go with the home team here. Give me George Southern to cover there. Troy, you know, actually has a little bit more experience with uh, being being 7-2 and two or 8-1. and one. You know, or the being at the upper end of the Sun Belt Conference at Georgia Southern, kind of with the Cinderella season this year. UCLA on the road at Arizona State. The Sun Devils are 12 and a half point favorites here. Eh, who knows? But give me them to cover. UCLA has not looked very good this year. Not blown out by Oregon uh, the other week. Uh, they were they did win two games in a row there. Then yeah. This is kind of kind of falling apart again. Chip Kelly, a lot of work to do still to get that team back to uh, relevance. And I think he will. 
eventually. I think he will, but uh, it's not going to be uh, anytime soon. Virginia uh, at home against Liberty, the Liberty Flames. The Cavaliers are laying 23 and a half points at home against Liberty. Uh, you know, I'm trying to just find out a little bit of something about Liberty right here. Um, geez, uh, you know, I know that uh, last year they beat, uh, who was it, Baylor <laughs> on the road. Um, so I cannot find anything, cannot find anything on Liberty right now. Uh, 23 and a half points, uh, a good deal of points there, especially in a, after uh, that disappointing loss at home to Pitt. So, uh, you know, I know that Liberty can put some points on the board. Um, yeah, they're four and four. The Flames are four and four right now. Um, who do they have on the schedule? This is actually their first year in Division in Division One, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they actually beat Troy. And they went New Mexico Army. Eh. That's a lot of points. I'm going to pick the mild uh, upset there. I'm going to pick Liberty to cover the spread there. I don't think they're going to win, but I'm going to take them to cover against Virginia. Baylor on the road to Iowa State, 14 and a half point underdogs. Eh, Baylor up and down this year, definitely uh, much more improved over what they were last year. Give me them to cover the spread here at Iowa State. Now, Iowa State doesn't blow out a lot of teams, or sure if last week they did because it was Kansas, but um, that. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just normally they normally play close games at home and away, and uh, Iowa State is just enough. Uh, one of my friends said the other day that he they were he concluded that they were who, who was it he said they that they reminded him of. I can't remember, but uh, he said they're they're not good. They're like the Missouri of the Big Twelve or something. He said they weren't good enough to. To, to win anything. They were just good enough to screw up somebody's season. Uh, Virginia Tech on the road at Pitt. Pitt laying three at home against the Hokies. Well, what are, this team's kind of just falling off the mark, haven't they? Virginia Tech, I mean, you know, struggle, the road to struggle bus to a win at UNC a few weeks ago. And last week, you know, or two weeks ago, just absolutely get annihilated at home by Georgia Tech on a Thursday night. Then last week, you know, just look kind of kind of punchless at home against Boston College, a ten point loss. Now a three point underdogs on the road at Pitt. Uh, I don't, you know, really see uh, a reversal in that trend coming here. I mean, Pitt definitely has a lot to play for. Uh, they could end up in the uh, ACC championship game. It's a very good chance of that happening if they went out. So I'm going to take them here to cover the spread at Heinz Field against the Hokies, a uh, team that uh, is probably going to end up being one of the worst seasons that have had in quite some time. Michigan on the road at Rutgers, 39 points. Uh, just, you know, I, I, I'm going to just save uh, a lot of talk here. I'm going to take Rutgers to cover the spread in this one. By far, I think Michigan is the better team. Uh, they are in the college football playoff ranking here on the top they're number four this week that was just announced a little while ago they took the spot of uh lsu who dropped the game to alabama uh however uh, 39 points is a lot to a lot to cover a game by i mean you don't just waltz into high point solution stadium piscataway new jersey and just come away with an easy victory um, they have played you know some teams close there they played northwestern really close uh at home a few weeks ago, if you'll remember, Michigan and Northwestern was a really close game, too. And this was before Michigan really got their offense clicking. But uh, I could see them winning this game something like 45-10, to 42-10. to 10, uh, And that would, in effect, that Rutgers would still cover the spread here. I do expect them to lose. And I expect them to lose big. 39 points, just a little bit too big. Northwestern on the road at Iowa. They are 10-point underdogs. To the Hawkeyes, uh, Northwestern, that's a 10-point loss last week to uh, Notre Dame at home. And, uh, you know, 
I was just uh, one of those teams. They've been kind of up and down this year. They've got had a couple of losses in a row at Penn State and at Purdue, both really close losses. Um, you know, I guess their best win would be uh, – mm, I, I really don't know. You, you might have to look at their win over Iowa State as their best win of the season. Best conference win, probably the 23 nothing shutout of Maryland. Um Let's go on ahead here. I'm going to take Northwestern to cover the spread here. I think Iowa probably wins it, but I'm going to take the Wildcats to cover. Oklahoma State on the road at Oklahoma, 18-point favorites. Sooners laying at home against the Cowboys. Uh, Oklahoma State's 5-4. and four. Of course, Oklahoma 8-1, and one, and you know, still, still with a shot uh, at that college football playoff. This line's actually grown. Since uh, since Monday, um, eh, you know, just looking at this as a rivalry game, that's a lot of points. I don't. I think Oklahoma State's going to put a fight up in this game. They always do. Um, you know, I got a win against Texas. Was kind of impressive. You know, Texas beat Oklahoma. Give me the pokes. Give me the pokes here to cover the spread in that one. Uh, Oklahoma, obviously the better and more talented team, but uh, I'll take them there in that spot. Kentucky on the road at Tennessee in Neyland Stadium. They are six-point favorites against the Vols. And uh, I thought the Vols were kind of turning, uh, turning the tide a little bit. You know, they won at Auburn. Uh, three or four weeks ago, and then uh, played by Gamecocks um, two weeks ago in a game that, uh, quite honestly, uh, I thought they outplayed us for most of the game there. Um, Jerick Warantano, you know, really, really tough, gritty player, you know, just takes hit after hit after hit. He just keeps coming back. Um, but then they, they play a home game this past Saturday, against the Charlotte 49ers of uh, Conference USA, which, you know, clearly, you know, a team that's improving, but clearly not on Tennessee's level talent or skill-wise. And, you know, they only win 14-3. to three. Uh, One of those scores, I think, was like a kickoff return or something. Uh, and this one here is a spot where, you know, you've got Kentucky coming in after that big loss. Uh, at home to Georgia this past weekend. Uh, they're not uh, any longer in the uh, SEC East Championship talk. But, you know, I think probably come in just a little bit pissed off with a little chip on their shoulder. Um, I think they'll probably play angry. And, uh, you know, I, I can definitely see them dominating uh, Tennessee on the line of scrimmage, especially their uh, defensive line against Tennessee's offensive line. You know, giving Guarantano a lot of trouble, uh, forcing him to make some mistakes here. Um, Kentucky definitely the better team this year. And I'll look for them to make it two in a row against the Tennessee Vols. Give me Kentucky to win this one. Uh, Mississippi State on the road at Alabama. 24 and a half point underdogs in Tuscaloosa. This is a game and it's where, you know, Mississippi State has a formidable front four, a uh, front seven actually. Uh, Tua has uh, taken some shots in recent weeks. You know, he's been a little bit banged up, a little banged up against Missouri. Um, moving a little slow, got a little banged up against LSU. Uh, you know, these teams, uh, Alabama, uh, and this happens with everybody. All these really good teams, who who are you know just rolling right along? They always have that one game where they just you know they some, whatever happens you know they don't they just don't perform as well you know they just don't win the game by as much as you'd think they're going to and and I can see that being this spot right here you know Mississippi State has been known to play Alabama tough in recent years twenty four and a half still a lot of points I fully expect the Tide to have to win the game really not have a lot of trouble with it. But, you know, another little bit of an upset special. 
Give me Mississippi State to cover that one. Purdue on the road at Minnesota, 12-point underdogs, or, or they're laying 12 on the highway, excuse me, uh, against Minnesota. Uh, this, is, uh, this is another no-brainer to me. Minnesota's just a terrible team. You know, they got blown out by Illinois last week. You know, they gave Nebraska their first win of the year. 12 points, not nearly enough. Purdue, uh, brilliant team last week with a win at home against Iowa. Uh, blew, blown out Ohio State a few weeks ago. You know, the only real blemish they have this year that I thought it didn't really look that good uh, was uh, that loss at Michigan State a few weeks ago by 10 points. thought they didn't really... After the uh, Ohio State game, we really didn't perform that well there in that spot. But I think they do perform well here against Minnesota. And then we have Washington State, Wazoo, on the road at Colorado. They are laying six on the highway in Boulder. Yeah, going ahead and give me Wazoo here to take this one and cover that spread. Colorado uh, started off really good, kind of. Kind of fell apart. They had a uh, loss at USC kind of there in the middle of the season, and uh, things just have not gone their way uh, from that point forward. So looking for Washington State, ranked number eight. And still, you know, if they win out, win the Pac-12 championship, you know, somebody up there loses, you know, still with an outside chance. You know, it's not a good chance, but it's an outside chance to uh, make the college football playoff. Stranger things have happened. Now, I mean, Colorado has lost to Oregon State. It's one of the worst teams in the Power Five. They lost to Arizona. Um, they were lost four in a row, actually. Uh, you know, six points is definitely not enough. This, this could be another lock, stock, and two smoking barrels pick also. Guarantee. Uh... Oregon on the road at Utah. Utah is laying three and a half at home against Oregon. Should be this. This will be one of the better matchups uh, of the weekend. Of course, Oregon with the high flying uh, offense and Justin Herbert. Utah uh, with Zach Moss, Tyler Huntley. Both these teams are six and three um, and ranked just outside the top twenty-five. Um, uh, Utah coming off of a loss at Arizona State. Now they got to come. They're probably going to uh, be looking to uh, avenge that and uh, get their season straightened back out. Of course, uh, Oregon blew out UCLA on the road a couple or at home a couple weeks ago. This this whole big Pac-12 is just a mess. I mean, they they were blown out at Arizona. You know, lost to Washington State, but you know, beat Washington. You know, I don't. I don't know what to make of any of these teams. Sometimes there aren't any more here. I'm just going to take the home team. Give me Utah covering the spread there. I think Utah is probably going to win the uh, Pac-12 South. Temple on the road at Houston. Houston laying four and a half uh, at home against Temple. Uh, this is a good team. Uh, Houston is especially defensively. Uh, Ed Oliver is just a beast. I also got a quarterback named De'Eric King who can make a lot of things happen. They're coming in 7-2. Temple's 5-4. Temple ain't been a bad team. Um, put a lot of points up on the board against uh, UCF last week. This At home, though, I think Houston here is a little bit too much for them. Go ahead and give me the Cougs to cover the spread in that one. Uh, now, we're talking about a touchdown and 10 point win, probably a fairly high scoring game uh, as well. I think the over under on that one's something like 69 points. Miami on the road at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech laying three and a half at home against Miami. Yeah, yeah. Go on ahead and give me the rambling wreck here to cover in this one. Miami, you know, still, Miami, a lot of skill on defense. They've got a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of speed there still, but uh, you know they're just they're just reeling. You know that 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 loss at home last week against Duke was that was just really bad. Uh, you know they have a loss against Virginia on the road. Um, and I, you know I would dare to argue and say Georgia Tech's probably better than both those teams. So go on ahead and give me the jackets there, yeah, Atlanta to cover on that one. 
LSU on the road at Arkansas, 13 and a half points is what the Tigers, the Bayou Bengals, are laying on the highway in uh, Little Rock. Or is it Fayetteville? I don't know where this one's being played at. This is this sort of this used to be what kind of one of the rivalry games. Um, what they play for like the Golden Boot or something like that. Because if you take both those states, they border each other together. They look kind of like a boot. Um, this nothing. No rivalry here though. LSU, give me them to cover here. That's another team I think will come out a little bit angry and a little bit PO'd uh, over last week's results and performance. And I uh, look for them to blow Arkansas out. One of the worst teams in SEC, if not the worst team in SEC. Texas on the road at Texas Tech. It's a one point, uh, one point spread there. Uh, Texas is favored at Texas Tech. That's a, Texas Tech is another one of those sneaky, uh, sneaky good teams that you really don't think a lot about. Um, I haven't paid. You know, a whole lot of attention to them this year. I do know, watch them play uh, Ole Miss in the first game of the season. And I saw them uh, a few weeks ago on a Thursday night win uh, at TCU. Uh, six in Texas, six and three. Texas, Texas, five and four. Um, you know, I think talent-wise here, I would definitely have to go with Texas in this game. Although, you know, Texas Tech kept a game they lost a shootout last week at Oklahoma at 51 46 are they a little bit gassed after that I don't know maybe um you know they played Oklahoma State uh they destroyed them earlier in the season 41 17 and they seem to play well against teams from Oklahoma uh Texas Tech or Texas you know they have to win. This is a must win for Texas if they're going to uh, if they're going to be able to uh, get a shot in that Big Twelve championship game. You know they've already got the uh, conference loss to West Virginia last week. Pretty disappointing there, uh, as far as that goes for them. You know they've also lost to uh, Maryland, which was uh, of course out of conference, and they also lost to Oklahoma State. So. This is kind of it for them. They got a win there, and I think they'll get a win. Let me go on ahead and take the Longhorns there. Florida State at Notre Dame. Notre Dame laying 17 and a half at home against Florida State. Boy, when the season started, did you think that was going to be the line uh, that you would see the second week of November? I certainly didn't, but uh, that's where we're at right now. Florida State, uh, just, just a terrible team, um, especially defensively. They have given up a ton of points to – uh, a lot of teams this year, you know, blowout loss to Clemson. They were blown out last week at NC State. Um, blown out by Syracuse earlier in the year. You know, I just – I don't have a lot of faith in Florida State here in this position. It's just not not a good look for them uh, at all. I, you know, I've heard some crazy predictions out there that, oh, they, they'll keep this one – they're going to keep it close. They have the athletes to keep it close. And, dude, they lost by 49 points at home. To Clemson and against a team that's supposed to be their rival. And yeah, I know Clemson's got an elite team, but you know, still, you know, do they have these playmakers or where they're at? I I don't know. I don't see it, and I don't have any faith in them. Going ahead and giving the Irish here to blow Florida State out. Oregon State at Stanford. Stanford's a twenty-four point favorite at home. Against Oregon State, the Beavers, you know, the Beavers uh, actually won at Colorado. I think it were, uh, was that a home game? I don't know. They beat Colorado a few weeks ago. Uh, last year, these two teams tangled uh, on a Friday night game, I believe it was. And I remember watching it. Uh, I was at Oregon State, and uh, they dang near won the game. Um, Stanford has not looked that great this year. had not been all that impressive. Uh, Oregon State, still a bad football team, though. They can run the ball. I'm going to take them to cover here. I think they're going to lose, uh, but not quite 24. Uh, Cal, uh, the Golden Bears, they're on the road in Los Angeles to uh, take on USC Junior. Both teams are five and four. Uh, you know, USC uh, Junior, uh, obviously, probably the more talented. Of the uh, two teams here, um, 
but with some, you know, with some losses this year, you know, that they probably uh, should not have had. Their coach is just sitting right square on the hot seat. They've lost to Arizona State, lost to Utah, Texas, Stanford. Um, Cal uh, was actually blown out by a UCLA team uh, several weeks ago. Um, uh, they did play Washington State fairly close last week. And they actually did win a game against Washington. We just go, go on ahead and give me the the Golden Bears here. I think they might just uh, they might just pull upset uh, at USC Junior. BYU on the road at UMass. This is an interesting one. We know UMass can put some points on the board. BYU's laying fourteen on the highway and. Uh, was that Amherst? Is that where the game's going to be played at? Um, hard to hard to say. Yeah, BYU was one that we were uh, looking at earlier in the year. They were actually ranked in the uh, in the top twenty five. They had knocked off Wisconsin, and uh, they were looking pretty good. They've dropped a few games uh, since. Uh, whew, this is this is a tough one. This is one that I. Uh, just really have not done my research on. I would have stayed away from there. Go on ahead and give me uh, – go ahead and give me UMass to cover the spread here. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I just don't think BYU is going to be able to put enough points on the board there. Uh, North Texas is on the road at Old Dominion. I've watched North Texas play this year. They're pretty impressive. Old Dominion, uh, other than beating Virginia Tech, they haven't done anything this year. I think they've won like two games. Give me the uh, the Mean Green or the, the Screaming Eagles or whatever you want to call them to cover the spread here. And finally, East Carolina on the road at Tulane. They're laying 13 and a half at home uh, to the Pirates. Um, East Carolina, another team that's just, you know, not had a very – not have a very good year, um, although uh, they kept the game against uh, UCF fairly close, uh, more so than what we thought they would, I believe. The Green Waves four and five so far on the year. Um, their most impressive uh, victory this year was uh, went against South Florida last week, forty-one fifteen at home in blowout fashion. Um, East Carolina is going to give up a ton of points here. Uh, I like Tulane in this spot. Give them uh, the edge at home. I think they'll cover there uh, against ECU and uh, take the victory in that particular game. So that's that, guys. That's 41 games picked. We'll see how we did. Last week, I actually went 18 and 14 against the spread. So all right up there, almost about 60%, not too bad. There are a few games that I picked that I should have known better on. The uh, LSU-Alabama game, yeah, I should have went with Alabama on that one. It was my gut. But, you know, I just picked LSU because I just thought that they might be able to uh, to keep that game close. And, you know, that's totally disappointed me. Uh, that was one of the ones that, uh, that got me the uh, – uh, there are several others that uh, escape me right now. But hopefully, uh, we'll do a little bit better on this one. Um, check back and see how I did on them. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit it with a thumbs up. That really uh, really helps me. It helps my, uh, helps my viewership grow. You know, when people look and they see a lot of thumbs up, you know, see a lot of thumbs down, that doesn't really, uh, doesn't really turn anybody's fancy. So uh, hit, it, hit this with a thumbs up if you enjoy the content, please. And I do appreciate it, guys, and I will see you all at the ball games. Check back in, see how I did. Go Gamecocks. Ah, ah, ah. See y'all later.